Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. I think we've covered just about every area in life that technology has transformed in the last week alone with such a diverse range of topics that we've covered. Never mind nearly 1,000 episodes. And speaking of 1,000 episodes, yes, we're getting ready for a party of our very own here. In October, we're due to hit 1,000 interviews with tech leaders from all over the world. And that's something to shout about, right? So I'm in the mood for a celebration. I want to celebrate this and maybe even get some personalised swag that I can send out to you all as a small thank you for supporting this show for the last four years. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm spending a lot of time online looking for ideas on the kind of things that I can create and hand over to you listening. So when I was looking for how technology can transform the world of celebrations and, and make my life easier, I came across something called Lifetimes. So I thought in today's episode... It was a message from the universe to explore how technology is helping people plan parties and celebrate big moments because life's too short, right? So like I said, Lifetimes is a digital party planner for any occasion, from birthdays to baby showers. They seem to have pretty much all bases covered, apart from 1,000 podcast episode celebrations. (laughs) But that is kind of a niche market, which will only appeal to a handful of people. And to those people listening saying, but Neil, this is a tech show. Well, Lifetimes isn't an ordinary party planner, so I invite you to buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to the US so we can speak with Katie Cunningham, CEO of Lifetimes, and take a deep dive on how she is using technology to bring party planning into the 21st century. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Katie. Can you tell the listeners a little more about who you are and what you do? Sure. And thanks, uh, Neil, for having me on. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the show. So I get a lot of information when it comes to innovation and when you feature, you know, startups and then, you know, mature startups. So I appreciate it. But I am Katie Cunningham. I'm the founder of Lifetimes. And Lifetimes is disrupt- disrupting the way people party. Um, we are an innovative vertical mar- market network and marketplace that's reimagining this stressful party planning process by providing time-saving tools and some fun functionality in one experience, saving folks really time, money, and, and really their sanity. Um, so we become the co-host through all life's important milestones to create an enjoyable experience. Well, I'm fascinated by how companies across multiple industries are leveraging emerging technologies. And I'm quite excited to learn more about exactly what it is you've created. And that line, disrupting the way people party, that's my kind of line. But I've got to ask, I mean, what's the story behind Lifetimes? I'm curious how you ended up disrupting party planning and what set you on this journey? Yeah, you know, it's a far cry from from 20 years of finance, I'll tell you that much. Uh, <laughs> people people look at me and say, you have a picture of a pug in a party hat. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> and I might have. But first of all, I'm a mom. So um, I am, by default, the designated party planner in my household. Um, it, it's not necessarily a badge of honor. If I don't do it, the kid would get a piece of bread with a candle in it. So um, So that's kind of my role. Most of my friends are in the same boat. You know, if, if they don't do it, it doesn't get done. And, and these memories are confidence builders and you want to be able to, to do them well, especially for your children. Um, second, like most, I, I'm a working mom, right? So I spent 20 years on the, in the corporate world. I was head of consumer acquisition at a large bank, at a demanding schedule, traveling everywhere. And I would talk to like my mom, female colleagues, and they were struggling also. And what we found ourselves doing was over indexing on celebrations and parties to make up for all the time we're away. And if you ask any mom, time and money are pretty much the same currency. You will pay money to create time. And I think finally, I just love to pull together celebrations and create memories, especially, you know, when they're milestones. And, and it's, it's, it's counterintuitive because I dread it, too, because it was so frustrating and just bifurcated and broken and stressful. So when I was working in the space of automating and 
creating digital solutions and consumer experiences for something like a mortgage, which is very complex, long transaction, a lot of arms and, and interest in it, um, very painful for both consumers and lenders. When I was on a plane and Googled how to throw a baby shower and I couldn't find anything but a printable checklist, I was floored. So I thought, you know what, I, I think I can solve this, right? I think moms will dig it. Um, so I set out to do my research like most new entrepreneurs or potential entrepreneurs who are thinking about jumping of the landscape, talked to a ton of moms and event planners, uh, understood the pain points outside of what I just thought they were did the market research, built the plan, and then I built the marketplace. I love that story. And after listening to uh, over well, nearly a 1,000 leaders and how they've started up their own business and startups at various stages of their journey, a lot of people will say to me, well, Neil, after all these people you've spoken with, what's the one thing that they've got in common? And I would honestly say that the one thing that everyone's got in common is they – come across a pain point and they try and fix it and there's just nothing or nowhere for them to go. So rather than just sit around and complain about it or put a Facebook status, they go out and create a solution. And that's exactly what you've done. And as, like you said there, people will pay money to create time. And it, it really is that easy, isn't it? And technology has made it easier for people to create their own solution to the problems that they encounter. Yeah, no, and you bring up a really good point, right? And I would think beyond the fact of, hey, you know, because there's the people that say, you know, God, I wish somebody would create this, right? Or why haven't they solved for this? And then there's people that actually go out and are, you know, are, I would some say brave, I'd say crazy enough to do it. But for me, I also think it was timing. So I don't think it would have happened if I didn't have kids or was a mom, or if I wasn't the designated default party planner, or if I wasn't on that plane, you know, suffocating from a workload, or if I didn't work at a startup in San Francisco and saw the spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship, or worked in innovation and strategy. So it's kind of weird that all those stars kind of had to align at the same time for me to, to one, even think of it, two, to even make the decision to do it. Yeah, I'm 100% behind you on that. Sometimes it feels like the universe is just giving you a little nudge in the right direction, <laughs> making sure you've got all the information at the right time. It's crazy. You are correct. So with Lifetimes, you can create multiple parties, create party websites, plan with co-hosts, guests of honor, manage guest lists, create interactive checklists, pin ideas or book vendors and venues. There's so much you can do with it. But can you just walk me through how it all works? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you could become a spokesperson. You said it beautifully. <laughs> um, so with Lifetimes, really we wanted, you, you talked about it earlier, right? Everything's fast, right? Technology. And we wanted to create an experience where somebody could start planning a party in seconds. So when you sign into Lifetimes, which is free to the user, the first thing you'll go to is your celebrations, right? So you're either attending or throwing several celebrations a year. Um, and you can have upcoming celebrations and we, we retain your, we have a repository of your past celebrations, or you can create a new one. So when you start your party in lifetimes, you put in whatever details you may have. It may just be the party name, right? It's six months away and you're kind of like me and you like to do the ideation of throwing a party. So from there, you can go into any of, let's call them uh, virtual rooms, right? Because there are many different kind of verticals when it comes to planning a party. And in today's world, what everybody knows is the consumer is in charge of their experience. They want to be able to choose their, event, their own adventure, especially if a process has multiple verticals. It's nonlinear. And, and, and so they want to decide where they want to start. So, for example, you know, you could start at your party dashboard that has important information, details, a countdown clock. Or maybe you want your foodie like me, right? And food is the most important centerpiece of your celebration. So you can go in and plan, order, make a menu and, and do all that stuff. Or you could go into the decor room, right? And find inspiration or order decorations. Or maybe you need a vendor like a face painter or a venue or a cake baker. You can search the marketplace for that. Um, we have automated tools. Maybe you want to go into the planning section and, and do customized tasks or assign due dates or budgets. 
There's an inspiration station where you can hook up with Pinterest, which is where everybody, you know, plan, uh, puts their party inspiration, right, and incorporate or upload those kind of pictures. So you can register for gifts. You can do invitations and get, you know, past invite lists because you don't want to go through the pain of recreating it. Um, my favorite feature, though, about Lifetimes is the celebration websites. You can customize your URL. You can share party details with guests. You can text it, email it. They can RSVP in a click. And we just launched video. So now, instead of just adding a picture, you can add a, a 30 second video that has, you know, little Sally who's five, you know, turning five years old saying, hey, you know, come on over to my party. Here's the date. And the person can watch it and RSVP right there. And people love video over pics. We know that in all the data, but it also creates an emotional response from the person receiving it that I think they're much more likely to attend versus getting a Mickey Mouse invite in the snail mail. And everything you mentioned there, a lot of people are going to be familiar because there's, there's so much you've mentioned that goes into organising a party, but they're all in so many different places. It'd be exhausting yep. going to each and every one of them. So am I right in saying that this is the only end-to-end -end solution out there that's got everything in one place? Is that right? Yes, you are correct. So yes, we are the only platform out there that's leveraging the Internet of Things to bring a cohesive experience for users. But let's let's level the field here, right? So like like you just said, let me take an industry we can relate to that's been, I think, uh, in the digital world, uh, has a, has an end to end experience. So let's look at weddings. Um, there are some amazing and some argue rightfully crowded market there, right? They have done an extremely well job of building a Zola, a Wedding Wire, a, a Knot that was just acquired by Wedding Wire, which is what Lifetimes is compared to, but for everything but weddings. I have no desire to get in that. It's a very specific market with specific <laughs> tools and, and, and a big ticket item and, and resources. But for everything else, th there's not a end-to-end -end marketplace. And when you look at parties, whether it's a baby shower or a birthday or a graduation party, the planning mechanics are all the same, right? When you look at food, decor, whatever, all those mechanics are in the same. Now, within those verticals, you see a lot of, heavy hitters that are firmly placed. So you have minted for invitations. You've got one of hundreds of decor stores. You've got ready to ship a party in a boxes popping up left and right. You got registries everywhere from, you know, Amazon to newer emergence like baby lists, subscription services for gift sets for every baby bridal housewarming party. You have directories of vendors and venues at nauseam everywhere. But with that said, I don't think you have to rebuild everything. It's time consuming and it's expensive. I think what you do have to do in today's world to be a smart tech entre entrepreneur is and have a marketplace is you have to leverage the internet of things. You got to partner with these love well-loved, credible brands that have followings, that have taken the time and built great technologies and organize them efficiently to offer customer choice and then build some wow functionality around it, creating one cohesive, amazing experience that sits on top of all, all the noise and the chaos so the customer feels organized, doesn't have to go to 800 different, different websites, doesn't need to abandon your experience to do it. Some standalone tech companies call it a mousetrap. I think of a marketplace more of a hamster habitat. It's fluid. You can move to the next step, which makes it end to end. So if we have anybody listening that's got a big birthday coming up or a baby shower, can you maybe walk me through a use case or a customer journey from the moment that they arrive on your site? Yeah. So a, a perfect example is if you have a baby shower, all you're going to do is create a, li a lifetimes profile and it is simple as saying I'm hosting or I am. And, and keep in mind, you have three different roles at a party, right? You're either a co-host, you're either throwing the party or you're a guest. So the first question we're going to ask you as a new user is, are you host or uh, existing user? Are you hosting or are you the guest of honor? And let's just say it's a simple, a simple party. You're throwing a, a birthday party. You're going to go straight in. You're going to put 
within whatever information you have. We ask you for party theme, date, venue, you know, just on one little simple questionnaire. It takes seconds to figure out, right, or to input the information. If you don't have all the information, that's fine. Boom, your party's created, and you can start planning anywhere in the process. You can start at invites. You can start your 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 website. You can start whatever you want. Let's just say you're the you're throwing a, a you're the guest of honor, right? And somebody's throwing you a baby shower. Say your co your your person throwing the the co-host throwing the baby shower hasn't even started. You as the mom, the minute you find out you're pregnant, I can tell you right now, you're already thinking of your baby. You know, born in your arms, your dream baby shower, all of that stuff. It's no different than the way you think about your wedding day. It is a major milestone. So you could go in there and you could create, you know, you could you could start your shower, right? The difference is, is that you'd have the co-host. Now, as a guest of honor, I know that you're going to have a limited view. I need the guest. I need that guest of honors, mom to be's help to figure out what her theme is, where she's registered who she wants invited, but I don't want her to see all the CD details like of who am I, who am I assigning the task to, or how much is the budget we're spending on the shower, right? So a guest of honor will have a very limited view. On the flip side, a lot of time when you are hosting something, you have something called co-host. They are pains in the butts, right? It's very hard to collaborate and communicate with. And I think with lifetimes, we've done a really great job of building the best co-host functionality to manage multiple tasks and assign it to multiple people. And as this is a, te- this is a tech show, one question I've got to ask you is how you envision the roles of things like artificial intelligence and machine learning and what kind of roles they're going to play in automating party planning and saving time in the near future? Oh, wow. I mean, uh, where do we even begin? Yeah. So let's not let's not go th- go through the the scary uh, back alley that sometimes people go when they talk about AI, <laughs> right? <laughs> we don't have to go to the last Terminator, right? <laughs> Cement vault. Okay. So at face value, we're solving a real pain point that exists today in millions, probably billions of lives globally, right? But we're automating party planning. We're we're making it digital. We're not creating space luggage, Neil or splitting the atom, right? But the difference is, is it's an emotional element to people's lives. At some point, the most, right? They will spend an increased amount of time planning celebrations and milestones. And if you peer over the ledge a bit and think about the innovation possibilities, what we are entrenched in is the most memorable, important moments with people, right? So how we leverage innovation when you talk about ML or AI, to further enable people to have the best experiences is a real question. So when you look at you know machine learning or, or AI, at the basic entrant is personalization, right? I hear people talk about personalization like, oh, well, we, that should be like just an assumed thing. People expect a p- personalized uh, experience. So when I look at party planning, let's put it as an example. If I'm, par- if I'm planning little Sally's five-year-old princess party, probably shouldn't see football cleats as a recommendation, right? (laughs) Everything you should see should probably be around that. Take it a step further. If you're planning a cultural celebration, all tasks, personal recommendation should match that. So in South Texas, we have a lot of quinceaneras, right? When a girl turns 15, it's basically like a, 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 a big sweet 16, sometimes feel like a quarter wedding, right? But there's certain specific steps and things you do co-hosts are involved. So you want to make sure that whatever they're doing from a recommendation and what they're seeing really matches what they're planning for and the experience of what they um, should receive. Now let's go further. How do you predict based on past user action, even though nonlinear, the next logical step to help them make it more seamless? Even though it may be a bit do it your step, do it yourself, you still need to be able to help them figure out the next logical step and make it seamless. How do we remind them not to forget something? You know, how do we tell them about the next best product or service they may not know about because they don't s- subscribe to your show? Okay, well, now let's get nuts. How do we predict the next moment in life to help them be in front of it and offer valuable resources? So in the most basic example, you know, if they just had a baby shower, we probably know that it was for a boy. 
We know the baby boy is going to probably have a baptism, is going to be turning one, is having a baby's first Christmas. From there, you can help predict the next logical step all the way to graduation, college, and beyond. To me, that's a lot of opportunity to help navigate in those waters. Let's take it a step further. Let's talk visualization tools. If you're buying decor, how do you know that banner, if you don't really read the fine print, is going to look good in your family room? Is it really three feet or is it three inches? How do we help them visualize and create buyer experience? If they create a website for Sally's fifth birthday at the movie theater for the latest Disney princess movie, why can't they buy the tickets in the princess costume and costume and Sally's gift right there on the website? In some cases, they may want a hybrid or a virtual party planner or somebody to help them with ideas and details and they still execute and look like Wonder Woman. So how do we automate and respond to those learned consumer behaviors and iterate on those assumptions? And then from an AI perspective, which to me is, everyone knows is cognitive, right? And produces, can produce or will produce or does produce an artificial emotional response that resonates with the end user. But imagine VAs, party planners, planning a life celebration. Imagine attending a baby shower virtually. So what I would say, Neil, is, and you know this because of everyone you talk to every day, all of these innovations exist in some form today. You look at house. When you look at AR, they buy. if you buy a couch, you can see it in your living room before you buy it. You look at Amazon when you look at machine learning or AI. You look at Tailspin, who you just interviewed, and their VR and EQ that they're targeting with organization. It's not. A, it's about looking at advancing technologies all around you. What innovation is happening all around you? Not just in your backyard, not just in your competitor's camp, but applying those large innovations to what is specific to the problem that you are solving and being creative. I truly believe, and I don't know if you do too, I'd love to hear your feedback. All of this stuff is going to be a service you can buy, just like cloud and AWS and, and Amazon. When you look at the ability to buy and apply that to your service in the near future versus startups trying to build everything in-house, which can be really expensive, takes a long time, and is hard as hell to really execute. I completely agree with you there. And something else that really excites me about the way that you were talking there and how you were putting it across is, yes, it is about all this technology that's, like you said, it completely surrounds us everywhere we look and all the innovation. But it's not about putting technology and innovation in for technology's sake. It's about solving real problems for people and making people's lives easier. It's the people that have always got to be at the heart of everything. I think that's where a lot of companies go wrong. It's all about the tech and not the people that they're serving. So I'm curious, what kind of feedback have you received from your users you know it's interesting i hear a lot of and, and is why i why didn't i think of this which makes me <laughs> feel you know great and also a lot of pressure um and the what i hear from the users most is from more of a, a feedback perspective is they want more in the marketplace right so they want more experience options so which we're working on and there's definitely some great companies to, to partner with if, if we don't want to build it ourselves right they love the fact that it saves them time and i'm not just talking about 30 minutes i'm talking about hours and days of planning and one thing that i hear a lot is that they feel like they can enjoy the moment of the celebration a lot better versus running around with their hair on fire um, they really enjoy the ideation of planning, and I do too, and everyone, the, everything that's looped into one platform. So a lot of times, like we talked about before, the verticals within party planning is very siloed, right? They do it well, but they're very siloed. So a, a person planning an end-to-end -end party would have to jump around to a lot of different websites. Um, it's no different than us in the old days when we'd have to drive store to store, right? Just times have changed. We can still make it, even though it's tech friendly, we can still make it very crowded in someone's mind. So they love the fact that they can stay within the experience and still go out to all the different places and get what they need and they don't lose track. Tech is great, but if it's not a one user experience, you can still get lost and, and frustrated. One thing that they do want to do is they want to share their parties and experience with Lifetime. So we're really focused on building a campaign on how we engage and highlight those experiences with uh, actual users. They love LifeMinders which is a reminder uh, system where you can input, you know, hey, it's going to be Nana's birthday, you know, uh, Cinder Flowers, 
Um, it may not warn a party, but they want a reminder so they can send their love. And honestly, calendars are nothing new. They've been around for 100 years, right? And automated calendars are nothing new. What's, what's fun for the user is they have it in a place where it makes sense, right? Where all their celebrations and milestones are, are happening. So we look to make that tool you know, a lot more robust. But one thing that's exciting about Lifetimes is the viral mechanics of it, right? So when you invite 10 people, 100 people to your party, you are actually, you get to introduce Lifetimes to that brand, right? And people really love the content. If you think about it, it's just aesthetically pleasing. You want to see people smiling, loving each other, having fun. Um, I mean, just in the last three weeks, I've had over almost 2 million views just in one social media channel alone on video, because that is the aesthetic. People are yearning to smile um, in today's world. So, um, and that's without spending a dollar. So, um, yeah, a, a lot of positive feedback and a lot of work to do, quite frankly. And speaking of that, a lot of work, I know this is a big question, but what's your grand vision for lifetimes? And has it changed much since you first started, or is it continuously evolving? I mean, every day is Mr. Toad's wild ride on a roller coaster. <laughs> um, but I do, it, it, it really hasn't changed much. I think your business acting, that will change, right? Your approach, uh, where you spend your time, but the fundamentals of lifetimes and what, if anything, I'm more committed than ever. Um, so I think my grand vision is really actually simple compared to all my other answers, which are the grand vision is that any celebration, any party, any holiday, any milestone globally, people will go to lifetimes to plan it from ideation to memories for the most important moments in their life. And that's it. And I'm glad you said globally there, because we've got listeners in 165 countries to this podcast. So are you serving people outside the U.S. as well as in the, the U.S.? Yeah, so now we see a lot of signers that are outside the U.S., and it's interesting you said that, Neil, because really when you look at Australia, right, you look at Canada, you look at the U.K., they are huge parties, right? They they love parties. They love celebrating. They love – now, that doesn't that doesn't necessarily require for me to, in, in some cases, to, to – uh, change my change my uh, languages, but I would like lifetimes, obviously, and this should be easy to do in today's environment. You could access it in Spanish. You could access it in any language, any country, anywhere in the world. You'd be able to access it and 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 throw a party. So yeah. So to answer your question in short, we are seeing a ton of people that are in different locations outside the U.S. sign up and using lifetimes, which is really exciting. Fantastic. And for everyone listening that wants to find out more information, what's the best way of finding you online? And equally, if they want to contact your team, if they do have any additional questions after listening to our conversation today, what's the best way of doing that? Yeah, so so uh, Lifetimes is uh, at www.lifetimes.com. It's not the, the, the I's are wise. So it's L-Y-F-E-T-Y-M-E-S. I have a funny story about that. And if you want to contact me, I'm katie at lifetimes.com. Um, just email me and I will get back to you. And my email contact is to contact me on the website because I want to be as close to my customers as possible as long as I can. Well, I'll add the links uh, to the blog post that will accompany this podcast. But you did say there was a funny story behind the name. So we've got to go there before I let you go. Okay, sure. Yeah. When I first started, you know, I, I, I obviously understand, you know, search engine optimization and everything. So I wanted lifetimes with the eyes and it was available. But as a, as a bootstrapping entrepreneur uh, on GoDaddy, I realized that lifetimes with eyes costs about $120,000. Lifetimes with Wise started 10. So I thought that I could still have the play on words and seem somewhat financially responsible and make the wise work <laughs> <laughs> excellent and that's the startup way of course i think you made a great decision there and i always say at the end of every episode that technology works best when it brings people together and it is also it's never been easier for anyone to come across a problem and want to set up their own business and solve that problem and get out there and make a difference in their own way and i love what you've done because you're actually disrupting the way people party and i think that's such a fantastic thing and proof that you can use technology to transform any industry at all but a big thank you for coming on and sharing that story with me today katie i appreciate you thank you so much i really enjoyed it 
We often talk about the rising expectations of customers who are demanding the personalization of everything and also the rise of the experience economy. And to have any hope of ticking all these kind of boxes, you need to have a new digital tool set because nobody wants a generic gift, birthday card, Christmas card or balloon or or anything that's just off the shelf. If you really want to show someone you care, you want to personalize your goods, whether that be balloons, flowers or other gift ideas. And people also want Instagram worthy decor, themes, photos, food or any other ideas when creating party environments. So personalizing celebrations, creating experiences, but without all the stress and hassle, that's something that I completely understand and can see why Lifetimes is proving so popular at the moment. So a big thank you for Katie for joining me on the show today. And as always, email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes, comments, feedback, questions, send them my way and I'll get straight back to you. And also remember, of course, if you've got any ideas on how best to celebrate 1,000 episodes of a podcast, of a tech podcast, I'm open for ideas. That's giving you all something to think about. <laughs> so it's time for me to go now. But we can do it all again tomorrow, can't we? Can't we? Yeah, <laughs> good answer. Well, a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.